Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog, and today is our conclusion to Marvel Tsunami Venom Week, so thank you all for being here. I really do appreciate it, and thanks for hanging in there with me as I try to get these episodes out this week. I had a couple things pop up unexpectedly, um, and it just kind of threw a wrench in my week, and I apologize. And I've been trying to get a lot of writing done, as I said I would, so we're not going to do five episodes this week. We're going to save Spectacular Spider-Man The Hunger. We're going to save it for probably next week or the week after. Uh, I want to kind of cut back on some of the comic book discussions for right now because I, I know there's no movie news uh, but uh, I feel like I've done a lot of these comic book episodes and it's caused me to you know spend a lot of time to reread them and take notes and things like that and uh, it's just not something I have a ton of time to do right now uh, plus I like to break up you know uh, things when they get a little repetitive so I think next week I'll try to make some fun different videos that are more movie related for you guys uh, and we'll get into that and then I'm gonna also have some guests or at least one guest in particular coming up on the show and I'll you know we'll talk about that probably next week sometime so for those of you who hung in there thank you for you know going through these comic books with me but let's take a little bit of a break and we'll dive back into comics in like probably two weeks from now uh, and then after this we'll kind of look for things that are related to the movie that we can talk about uh, and I'll go through the IMDb and find some interesting people that are working on the movie and maybe we'll make videos on them and their past work as well and why it's cool that they're part of the Venom franchise so uh so today let's wrap up uh the Venom you know Marvel Tsunami Wave written by Daniel Way we have already talked about everything that's been going on every you know, basically if you haven't watched the previous episodes please check them out uh, their episodes you know the three previous uh, from this one uh, and then so now it's you know uh, Patricia Robertson she's our main character and in the first book it was like the movie The Thing where she was in the Arctic and she was trapped with a new version of Venom and he was killing and eating everybody and she barely escaped with her life and then in the second book called Run uh, she teamed up with the guy named The Suit, who's like this, you know, alien from outer space, a bunch of nanobots that like merge together to make this, you know, men in black looking dude. And uh, the two of them teamed up with Wolverine to try to take down Venom, or this new Venom, and these uh, these spies named uh, Vic and Frankie. And then we learned that Vic and Frankie work for a guy named Bob, who is also an alien much like the guy, like The Suit. So The Suit, you know, guy, the nanobite guy, he's, uh, he's one version of this alien, and Bob is another version and we learned a little bit about their backstory and patterns which was the third story arc that we just talked about in the last episode and we learned that the Fantastic Four are kind of the reason that uh, the suit came back to Earth. He was like a little nanobot that was in some far, you know, planet that the Fantastic Four visited, and he latched onto their ship. And it turns out he has a connection to Earth, and we're going to learn, learn more about that in this run here, which is called Twist. And this is the final five issues of Daniel Way's run here. And you can kind of tell in this run uh, that the book was going to get canceled. I think Daniel Way probably knew when he started issue one of this storyline uh, that the book was done. And so he probably asked Marvel, hey, can we have five more issues and what he did was you know Francisco Herrera I guess the artist wasn't involved anymore um, and they didn't bring back Paco Medina or anyone so they had uh, Human Torch was another book that was part of the Marvel Tsunami Wave and Scotty Young was the artist on it and so Scotty Young decided to come over and write or draw I'm sorry draw the last five issues of this run so the art in this is very good I love Scotty Young's style and he did a great job differentiating the two Venoms because we're going to talk about Eddie Brock he's finally back in the storyline we're going to find out how he's involved and what the plan is with him. Um, and there's just a lot of cool things that are going on with this storyline that come to a head here. But then there's also a lot of opportunity that I felt was really missed. So in my opinion, Twist here is the weakest of the stories. And I think that's because Daniel Way knew it was going to end. I think he came into this going, all right, you know, if I could have maybe... 25 issues I could tell this whole story and then sales were low on the book so Marvel was like all right you got to wrap it up early you got to wrap it up around issue 18 and uh, I think that made him cut a lot of the ideas he had and reduce them to like moments in this book and unfortunately they weren't moments that were very strong in my opinion and I think they put a halt on some of the really interesting development that this story was making and they were just like, Burr, hit the brakes because we got to end the book. And unfortunately, that was kind of a big letdown for me. Uh, you know, I was really into this book and I was really liking where it was going. And then I thought we were going to get some interesting answers in this book. And I feel like we just, you know, got a lot of rushed stuff. So without further ado, let's just dive in and I'll explain what I'm talking about. 
When the book starts off, obviously we're back with Patricia. It's, you know, at, after the end of Run, uh, she had, you know, disappeared for a while, a couple weeks, I think, and then she showed up in Buffalo, New York to make that phone call to try to reach out to her mom, and that's when Bob and Vic and Frankie and S.H.I.E.L.D. started tracking her. Well, now she's made her way to New York, and, uh, you know, Fury and all those guys, they lost touch with her. They can't find her, so they're like, okay, we got to regroup. Let's start from scratch. Like, the real Venom, Eddie Brock, you know, who they put in the vault two years ago, um, or, you know, 18 months or whatever prior to this, he's obviously been out. He's harassed Spider-Man multiple times. He's still out there on the loose. So, you know, Nick Fury pulls all of his resources and says, hey, let's go find Eddie Brock. And maybe he can lead us to this new creature. Or maybe the creature will end up going back to Eddie Brock since it is a piece of him. So it's kind of everyone's theory is that, you know, they, they think the suit, the new alien, you know, suit, uh, the new Venom, uh, on Patricia Robertson will return uh, to its home essentially and it'll find its way back to Eddie Brock and that's what Bob and them are hoping for as well they've tampered with uh, the alien suit they've messed with it they've done everything they could and now they're just waiting for it and their their goal is they want it to rebond with Eddie Brock as well for some nefarious purpose uh, so uh, so you know we're gonna learn about what that could be here as we dive into this so Patricia starts off the story and she's walking through an alley and she senses that someone's following her. So she turns into Venom and runs up the side of a building and when she gets up there she sees the suit, the guy, you know, like the, the men in black looking dude. And he says, hey look, you know, um, I have, my plans have changed, you know, she's like, where have you been? He's like, you know, she's like, well, he's like, you, you know, he kind of left me out in the middle of nowhere, which we know is true. He was just like head when she left him because he was ripped apart by the Venom Wolverine. So I guess he's healed now and he's back. And so she's like, hey, you know, we, you know, took you long enough to get here. And he's like, yeah, well, the plans have changed. And she's like, what plan? He goes, just trust me. And he's like, you have to deactivate your collar that's helping you control Venom. And she's like, but if I do that, the suit will take over, you know, and he's like, yeah, well, we kind of need that for the next part of the plan. I need you to uh, also infiltrate S.H.I.E.L.D. And uh, she's like, okay, what do I got to do? So because of course she trusts, you know, the suit, he's been helping her uh, the best he can. So she decides to go undercover, the suit changes her into, you know, a different person, and she infiltrates S.H.I.E.L.D., and she dresses up as one of the soldiers that is going in with Nick Fury to look for Eddie Brock. Uh, and then meanwhile, we cut back to the rooftop, and you find out that the, the suit, the guy, the man in black dude, he's not actually the suit. The nanobots come out, and they transform his face back into Bob, and it was Bob posing as the suit to get close to you know Patricia and to get her to do exactly what he wants her to do. He wants her near Eddie Brock and he wants Eddie Brock to rebond with that suit and tear it off her. Um, so you know so he's she fell right into his plan and didn't even know it. And so Bob pretty much spends the rest rest of this book sitting back and watching along with Vic and uh, Frankie and they're kind of you know on standby in case things get out of control. They're gonna go out and like herd. Patricia back towards Eddie Brock and that's kind of their role and then meanwhile they even cut to outer space and you see another Bob the one in the black suit because this is lab Bob from New Mexico in the white suit um, you have uh, Bob who was normally in New York in the black suit and he's in a spaceship in outer space and he has his own Vic and Frankie up there and literally they set that up and they never go back to it we have no idea what they're doing up there in that spaceship and currently still to this day in Marvel Comics we have no idea if they're still up there if what they're working on, why they're in space, it, it makes no sense at all. You could clearly tell Daniel Way had a bunch of ideas and just never got around to finishing them, which is a bummer because I feel like when he started his Deadpool run after this, that would have been a great thing to do is do a Deadpool Venom story and tie in this and maybe wrap up some of these loose ends. But I think he went in a totally different direction with Deadpool and he wanted to tell his own stories there, obviously. Um, so he never came back to these threads that he just left open, which is kind of a bummer. After Patricia, you know, infiltrates S.H.I.E.L.D., they're heading in to take down Eddie Brock. They break into his apartment. He kind of senses that they're coming. He's living very much like he does in the current Donny Cates run, which is interesting. He has a small apartment, no furniture, just a mattress on the ground. Uh, and he's curled up in bed, and then he wakes up, and he notices, you know, that someone's coming. So he turns into Venom, and he gets ready for battle. So we get Eddie Brock full-on, like, fighting S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, which is pretty cool. And he's tearing them apart. Uh, but then Patricia shows up and makes herself revealed, and as this battle is ensuing, you know, every, in the chaos, everyone's like, oh my god, there, there's two Venoms here, what's going on? Everyone's caught off guard, and then even Nick Fury's caught off guard and almost falls off a building, but then Spider-Man 
happens to be swinging by at that time, grabs Nick Fury and saves him. Uh, and then they get into the battle. And when Spider-Man jumps into the battle, he's like staring right at Venom. And he's like, all right, Eddie, he's like, what are you doing here? We had a deal. Like, stay away from New York. Stay, you know, you know, stay out of my hair. And we won't, you know, don't cross paths with me. And I won't, you know, you know, we won't have to battle each other. Uh, and he's like, why are you doing this? And which is weird he said that because they made that deal before Lethal Protector. And then you had all those moments during Lethal Protector and then even Spider-Man in the next chapter. And, you know, he didn't really make a deal with Peter <laughs> at that time. So uh, I don't know. It was, it was a weird. It was like a throwback, like, hey, look, continuity, but ignoring all the continuity in between, I guess. So, uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't know why that was there. But so he's like, you know, well, why are you here, Eddie? What's going on? Why is S.H.I.E.L.D. after you? And then uh, this Venom looks at him and goes, I'm not Eddie Brock. And he's like, yeah, sure, you're not Eddie Brock. And then he goes, then he hears a voice behind him go, no, seriously, Parker, that's not me. And then Peter turned around and there's the other Venom, you know, Eddie Brock. And he's like, this is something completely different. And then you just boom, the next issue is pretty much two Venoms going at it with S.H.I.E.L.D. agents and Spider-Man all caught in the middle. Bob, uh, Bob with Vic and Frankie are watching nearby, you know, watching everything happen. And uh, Patricia, she gets wounded in the fight and gets sent down into the sewers. And that's where the real suit shows up. The man in black dude, he shows up still putting himself back together after weeks of trying to repair himself. He at least has legs and a body and one arm, but he's still rebuilding the rest of himself. And he pulls her out of the water and he's like, come with me, you know, like I'm going to try to save you. And then the battle on the ground, you know, is kind of got out of control. Eddie Brock slips away. And Spider-Man is left there, you know, picking up some of the pieces, and then he goes after Eddie Brock, you know, trying to get answers and leaving Nick Fury in an alley where he was webbed up by, you know, the uh, one of the Venoms. I think Eddie Brock webbed him up, and uh, Nick Fury is like on the ground, and Bob makes himself known to Nick Fury, and he walks up and he says, uh, "Hey, um, you know, Nick Fury's like, who the hell are you? What are you doing here?" And Bob says a code he like spouts off a bunch of different numbers and he says alpha zulu omega or something like that and then nick fury basically it was a code for nick fury to stand down and nick fury is like okay well only he's like oh crap like only one person or two people could possibly know that code and that is someone who outranks me and that's very high up in you know in shield and you know the governments and stuff of the world so how does this guy know the code and he's like you know and he doesn't question it really past that Bob just says, yeah, the reason that code, I know the code, is because it exists because of me. I'm telling you, stand down. And Nick Fury goes, yes, sir. And that is literally the last we see of Nick Fury. Two issues into this, after all that buildup and all his involvement in creating the suit and everything, you know, the man in black dude, like, I, all that, and he's gone. He just gets told to stand down, and he just accepts the order. And I'm like, come on, it's an... It, he may not know Bob is an alien from another planet, but he has to know people can hack into things, people can do things, and so he literally just stands down. And when you, especially when you know it's at stake, uh, you even wonder why more. If Nick Fury knows this, why would he not stay involved in the storyline? And literally, the fate of the world is at hand here. So, like, why Nick Fury doesn't get back, you know, in the game after this, I don't know. So, and again, I think Daniel Way planned for him to and just couldn't because of page count and time. Uh, so, it's really frustrating. So, this last story really suffers from a lot of that setup and then just, like, hardly any payoff. Uh, so, when Nick Fury just stands down, you're kind of like, what? Like, that makes no sense. He's got to come back and have a big moment at the end, and he doesn't. Uh, this is the last time we see Nick Fury. And then we cut down to the sewer, and we find out what is at stake here. Uh, the suit is talking to Patricia, and he's telling her, like, hey, look, you know, way back when the flood that came, it was not an actual flood that wiped out, like Noah's Ark and all that. That wasn't a, it wasn't a real flood. It was basically my race coming to wipe out this planet, to wipe out all the human life on this planet. And uh, because of inclement weather or something like that, because it was like raining like crazy all over the planet, like something, you know, something intervened, you know, whether it was fate or, you know, destiny or whatever, but uh, something intervened and we, ne we decided to change course of the plan and my race was told to pull out of Earth and go back to our home world. But some of us didn't get the message, apparently, and that's where Bob comes in. Bob is one small cell of these nanobites that uh, has been around, I guess, since Noah's Ark, uh, on Earth, planning things and building his Ararat Corporation and working in secret and making his clones. So who even knows how old Vic and Frankie are, if you really think about it, because they could be women he met, you know, in the you know, 1200s or the 1500s or before that, and he could have just constantly been making new ones. Uh, they might not even be modern women actually so it's uh it's i don't know it's a lot to think about so i like that aspect of it but at the same time none of it pays off so it's kind of like eh, who cares 
And as the suit is telling Patricia all this, the Frankie, the one that we thought was dead, or the Vic, whichever one, um, the one that we thought was dead in the run, she actually just took her collar off and she's gone off the grid. And now she's going around and finding the other Vicks and Frankies and taking them out uh, in her as an attempt to get back at Bob, and she wants to screw up Bob's plans by making this suit that's on Patricia not bond with Eddie Brock. So she has her own agenda, and she finds them in the sewer, and she tells them, like, hey, look, I know about the flood thing, I know about the mission thing, I know about your race, and I know about all that stuff, so I'm here to help you. Here's my, you know, device. It can turn her collar back on. She can control the suit again, because during the battle, you know, obviously she turned it off to fight Venom in the battle, and her pure willpower was what was holding the suit onto her this whole time. So Patricia Robertson isn't messing around. She's able to control this out-of-control symbiote. It actually bonded with her, and, and you know, she's able to hold it at bay, but she's losing control fast, especially with that collar off. So, you know, her willpower alone isn't enough, unfortunately. Uh, she would make a good Green Lantern I guess, uh, but she's still, you know, she's still failing now. She's starting to lose control. So, you know, this Vic or Frankie says, hey, I'll help turn that device back on. And once I do, you know, she'll be in control again. And I want that because I want, I don't want Bob's plan to work. I want her to get as far away from this suit as possible. And I want you guys to destroy it. And, you know, and of course, you know, Patricia's like, yes, that's what we want too. I'll, I'm willing to die to destroy it if that's what it takes. And she's like, I know you are. That's why I hope you trust me. And here, let me turn your device back on. So she's like, all right, fine. You know, we trust you. So she turns the device back on. And now Patricia is once again, fully in control of Venom or her version of Venom. Uh, and then she just, she teams up with the suit and Frankie or Vic, whichever one is still alive, and they head back up to the ground to join the battle again. And meanwhile up there, uh, Spider-Man and Venom have been trapped inside the Baxter building by the Fantastic Four because Spider-Man went after him to get answers. And then when he went in there, he saw that, you know, they set a trap for Venom. And of course, Spider-Man was like, look, Venom is actually possibly the victim here. He was trying to be good. He wasn't, you know, doing anything bad. He was actually laying low for once. And this creature showed up and attacked him. And we need to keep it, you know, separate from the other symbiote. And the Fantastic Four were like, yes, that's why we're going to keep him trapped here. And Spider-Man being Spider-Man, you know, was like more worried about the person itself. He's like, look, I'm more worried about Eddie. I, I kind of owe this guy and this guy's life's been ruined because of me. And I, I, I want to do something right by him. So, if you think Spider-Man would just sit still and not do anything and just let them keep Venom safe, but he doesn't. He, he kind of screws it all up. He's a little manipulated to do so, so it's not purely his fault. But he does, you know, break in, get Eddie, and they get out. And then they run right into Patricia. And then at, that's at this point when the two suits merge. And, like, Eddie is, like, you know, fights Patricia. They get into a big battle. Spider-Man's trying to stop them. Bob and, you know, is, like, off to the side watching. His Vic and Frankie get killed by, um, you know, the the one that we thought was dead, the one that was in the sewers talking to the suit and Patricia, and she shows up and Bob, you know, I think eliminates her too. So all of that build up, nothing really there, nothing really happened there. And then Bob is sitting watching like the final battle unfold. And uh, another Vic and Frankie are like, hey, mission accomplished. The suits are now merging. And uh, so, you know, even though Spider-Man gets a moment to try to save Patricia, he fails at it and she gets caught up by Eddie Brock. And Eddie Brock just instinctively grabs her, rips the suit off, and rebonds with it, and turns into a bigger, meaner-looking Venom. And uh, he looks at Peter, and he says, all right, this is your last chance. Stay away from me, because, you know, I, I now have a thirst for blood in me. I bonded with that suit, and now I have its anger and, and hatred inside me again, and, uh, and I will turn it on you if you come after me. And then he departs and leaves, and he leaves Spider-Man on the ground, beaten up again, kind of how we saw him at the beginning of Patterns. And then the Fantastic Four are all scratching their head going, what happened? No Nick Fury around. And it's like the fate of the world, literally, like Bob's plan was to get these two to merge because they apparently will somehow cause a, a global epidemic of some kind just by merging together. And we have no idea what that is because this is where the story ends. We have no idea about Bob's plans, the Ararat Corporation, Vic and Frankie. We get no closure on any of this. And no writers since this book ended in 2004 have ever picked up this thread again. Where is Bob? What is he doing? When the suits merged, was you know what? How did it hurt humanity? Eventually, that part of the suit, though, uh, Rick Remender and Colin Bunn do touch on that later on when they do Agent Venom, and that part of that sim the, that evil symbiote that we've been reading about in this book uh, that was bonded with Patricia, it does get pulled off and put on a young girl, and she becomes Mania, and she becomes a sidekick 
to Agent Venom. And it's actually a really cool story and a really great character. So something does come out of this run in the long run of uh, comics. But really, you know, what's the epidemic? What's the, what's the evilness that comes from this suit? I mean, it does go to that girl, and then it goes to um, Lee Price later in Venom, Inc. And he uses that version of the suit to possess a bunch of people in New York City. Maybe that was kind of the plan that Bob had, but again, we have no idea because Bob's been gone this whole time. So it'd be really interesting if another writer ever comes across the story and decides to pick up on these threads. Uh, I would really appreciate it because as someone who liked this run, I feel like there's a lot of potential there for something neat, but I really didn't like the, you know, Nick Fury being told to stand down and then him just doing it. I didn't like the flood Noah Ark story and that it was like, you know, a metaphor for a possible alien race wiping us out. I mean, there's all these things in the book that were just like, oh, if these were sprinkled out over more issues and told more, you know, clearly, it probably would have been good. But it's so convoluted because you could tell Daniel Way is just trying to get all these ideas in the last five issues of his book. And then some of the ideas he's been setting up don't even get paid off well because, again, he only has five issues to tell his story. So it really bummed me out. So this last arc is definitely my least favorite out of this entire run. But of course, that's just my opinion. If you have a different opinion, let me know. I think I saw a lot of you guys leaving comments all week about how this is the turning point. This is where you were like, all right, I don't like this run at all. And for me, this didn't retroactively make me dislike the first three trades. It just really bummed me out. I almost want to retcon this fourth trade uh, twist, or I think when they put it in trade paperback, it's in three volumes. Uh, I think they put run and patterns together and then twist it's its own graphic novel. But you only you almost kind of want to retcon this one and just, uh, and just retell it somehow. Uh, but then I guess if you did that, we wouldn't have got Mania later in the Agent Venom run and then the Venom Inc. storyline and stuff like that. So it does matter to the continuity. There are some things that other writers pulled from this story, but they never went back on the Bob thing. Like, I would really like to see some kind of c conclusion with that or even just modern day, just have Bob show back up after Ven the events of Venom Inc. and be like, all right, so that's what I knew this suit was capable of. It was, it's capable of like, you know, spreading itself like a virus and infecting people and creating a hive mind. And that's what I want to use it for. Um, you know, I don't know why he would want to do that. I thought he wanted to wipe out the human race and not like control them and make them do stuff. But I guess if he controlled enough of them, he, enough of them, he can use them to wipe out one half and then, you know, tell the other half to like, you know, commit suicide or something like that, uh, or just, you know, walk into a fire or something. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, w I would just like to see some kind of, uh, nod to that. Uh, at some point, just because I personally liked it. I liked the setup, uh, but I just didn't like the payoffs that we got in this issue on the few payoffs we actually got, uh, because Twist really was just, uh, it was a twist in the sense that it turned the story to a bad direction, and it ended on a bad and sour note, in my opinion. So let me know, what do you guys think? If you've never read this run before, do you have an opinion on what I've talked about today? Do you have any questions, anything you want clarified? Let me know now in the comments, and if you have read this book, let me know your thoughts down in those comments below. Uh, thank you guys so much. And like I said, coming up very soon, we're going to talk about more movie stuff and I'll try to pull and find some information for you guys. And we'll kind of take a break on comics for a while. And then also on June 1st, I'm going to be launching my Patreon with my first video where I'm drawing and uh, I'm going to be drawing on this cover. I'll even show you a taste of it. I put this on my Instagram. Um, I am drawing an uh, old man Hawkeye cover and I'm going to be casting actors and trying to do the best I can to capture their likeness. This is Stephen Lang. Uh, the actor who everyone wanted to play Cable, I drew him as Old Man Hawkeye. And I'm going to be adding in more details and adding in more characters. And on the back, I'm probably going to draw the army of multiple men Venoms on the back as well. And each issue or each episode of my Patreon is going to be me adding a new character and a new detail to this. And I did find an inker and colorist on Facebook today who is going to be um, inking and coloring my stuff. And we're going to be releasing prints. And in a year from now, after all the drawings I do on Patreon, we're going to make a cool art book as well for sale. So uh, anyone who funds the Patreon is going to go to paying Richard to help me ink and color these and make these look awesome. Like every drawing I do, he's going to take to the next level. So please, if you can, definitely support me over there so I can, uh, you know, create, you know, cool art for you guys. Hopefully cool art for you guys. Hopefully you like it and uh, try different styles and, uh, you know, make some interesting content that are more creative based over on Patreon. And then, of course, I'm still going to do the uh, the Venom vlogs here, so don't worry about that. But then everything else might go away. I might just focus on Venom vlog and Patreon for a while just so I can, you know, catch up with life. And I have a second job I'm starting soon, so i got a lot going on. So I'm going to do my best. But as you guys know, I will always, always deliver what I can for you. 
So thank you for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you all in the future. Peace.